Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Quite some time ago, I mentioned the Devil's Blacksmith Project. That's a project out of Austria where they were trying to duplicate the techniques and the style of work used in the famous hinges on the Notre Dame Cathedral. And I donated to that project and I managed to get the sample piece from the video that they did. And I'm hoping to try and learn some of these techniques myself, try and use some of this in my work. Probably not quite to this level, but who knows, maybe we'll get there. And I just haven't had the time to do that. But one of the things that really intrigues me on this particular sample piece are these kind of leaf forms or plant forms. Almost looks like a prickly pear cactus, but that wouldn't be something they would have had in uh, Notre Dame, I don't think. But anyways, these things kind of interest me. And they are clearly forged in a bottom die, an open forging die, and they have raised elements. All these little dots are raised. And it would be really hard to forge that and then try to work around and leave the raised dots up. So you've got to have a die that you can forge it into. And I think it's going to take a couple of steps to make this die. First, I need to create a master that is the shape that I want, but I won't be able to create those raised dots on the master. So I'll have to make a die with the, the master without the dots, put the dots in the die, and then put the master back into that die and forge it down so it has the dots. Once I have that master, I can use it to make as many of these dies as I need. So today I'm gonna to make one that doesn't have a hardy shank. It's not meant to go in any specific tool but it would be useful in a number of different tools and it could be used just sitting on the anvil if you wanted to. But once we have that master made, I can make one for the anvil, I can make one specifically for the treadle hammer, for the hydraulic press, wherever it is you think you want to use a die like this. And then you keep that master and anytime you need to make a new die or just clean up the impression on the old die, you've got the master and you're back right where you started, instead of making a copy of a copy of a copy over and over again. So the first thing to do is to make that basic shape, that kind of leaf shape. And I'm going to use a piece of S7 for this. This is 5 8 diameter S7 just because I happen to have it on hand. Half inch is probably big enough. But the S7 one will really stand up to the use once the master is completed and it will survive for many years and make a whole lot of these dies if I need to. No, I'm not going to go into production making the dies, but if I wanted to, this would be the, the piece that would do that for me. But the other reason is I can air harden it and I don't have to do a whole lot of messing around. So we should be able to get this done today and see not only the master be completed, get the die completed, and maybe make a sample piece with it. So that's a lot to do today. Let's get to work. I'm just going to start this like I do most leaves with a short point, although these don't come to a real sharp point, so this will have to get modified once I get it close to what I want. Now remember the S7 is pretty tough stuff so if it starts getting hard to forge heat it back up. But you can make this master out of just about anything. If you were only ever going to make one die, you can probably do it out of mild steel, but I don't think I would take the time to do that. I'm just going to offset this at the edge of the anvil to make the stem for the leaf. This thing really wants to roll around in my hand today. Got a glove on, must have some wax on it. I'll get rid of that glove and it'll make life a little easier. All I'm doing now is really just defining the mass that will be that leaf shape. Let's start rounding up the stem a little bit.
Now this we just forge out. It's going to be kind of a roundy looking leaf shape. So I'm just going to start beveling that and rounding it here at the anvil. And I think this is too big, but we're going to fix that. And of course the exact shape is up to what you want for your project. I'm trying to come pretty close to what they have because I like what he did there. And I think I have plenty of material to create that shape at this point. There would be nothing wrong with going with what I've got. You say that's just because I'm trying to come close to the shape they have. Thin that stem out just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring that up to heat and I'm going to let it go ahead and air cool, which will harden the S7. Now there's no reason for this to be hardened at this point. The only reason I'm hardening it is because I'm air cooling it to save time and make it a little bit more expedient to get the tool done. Putting it in vermiculite and cooling it over a matter of hours would probably be a little bit better for it. If you're using some kind of steel that isn't air hardening, air cooling and normalizing is perfectly acceptable. But I'm going to use a grinder on this next. And my grinder doesn't care too much that this is hardened. Belts will last a little bit longer if it's not hardened, but it's pretty negligible. And I think this is a point where you need to be on good terms with a grinder or at least some files to create exactly the shape you want. This is going to define who knows how many parts with this same element, and you don't want it to be kind of so-so. So take the time to grind it, file it, do whatever you need to do to get it just right. So once this is cool, that's the next step. So here this is after grinding and I've taken it down to a 220 grit finish so it'll leave a nice smooth impression. And I'm going to go ahead and just pass this through the forge briefly to temper it some because I don't want it brittle. I'd hate to snap it off here. So I'm going to bring this up to bronze, maybe purple, something like that so we can go ahead and use it to make our die. And this then will be our die block. And that's where we're going to set this down into. And this is a piece of 4140, just happened to be the size I had. This is inch thick by inch and three quarter square. I think a piece three quarter inches thick by about an inch and three quarter, even two inches. This could be just a hair longer and I think it would be okay. But in any case, that's what I've got. And as we do this, it's going to spread a little bit, so that'll be okay. So first thing I'm going to do is temper this a little bit. Then I'm going to get this hot and we're going to go ahead and sink the die. So now we start a very careful process of sinking this master, or the beginnings of the master, down into this die. You don't get too many chances to line this up properly, so make sure you like the way you got it set up there. And you see how that jumps? Just hit it once and feel for your depression and do it again. Really, a hydraulic press would be the way to go with this, but I know not everybody has a hydraulic press. 
then just get it hot when it starts to cool off. Take your time. If you do this right, this die will be around for the next generation. You may not sink this original all the way in there. And at this stage, that's probably okay. I think we're about as deep as I want to go. I'm not sure we got all the way to the tip of this or not. Yeah, I think we did. Seems like it pulled this way, so we could have started further out to that edge, but. That isn't going to hurt us one bit. Now the next problem is that that original has little dimples in it. The next problem is that original had those little raised nubs which have to transfer over to the master in the long run. I don't have to do that. I can just put them in this and leave the master as it is. But if I reforge the master into the die once we do those nubs, then the master will have that if I ever have to make another die. At least that's my theory. To do that, though, I'm going to just use, this was a regular old, this was a regular old punch, flat bottom punch for punching holes. I just took it on the grinder and rounded it off so it'd make the little nubs. Then I'll flatten it up and make a punch out of it again. And we'll just come through here by hand and put those little nubs in. I think I'm going to start with a row right down the center and try to get them relatively even. I think the ones on their original must have been smaller. Oh yeah, that didn't work out very well at all. Right. I'm going to have to kind of go back and forth on these because they are a little bit big and I'm washing out my original dimple with the second row here. But we'll see what we end up with. Now I end up with some interesting little shapes doing this, but that's not what I'm going for. So I'm going to try and come back and refine these lightly as I go and hope I end up with something I like. If not, we know how to do this over again. So this certainly won't be just like theirs because of the size of the punch I'm using. But if I don't like it, I can always go back with my master as is and set another block like this. This is easy enough at this stage. Make a smaller punch scale in there so I can't see what I'm doing. So this is going to be quite interesting, I think. And I think that's about all I'm going to do to it at this stage. I'm going to let this air cool at this point. 4140 is pretty tough stuff. Then we're going to forge a sample in this and see what we've got. If I don't like it, there's no reason to go any further. I'll start over with a different block. While I was waiting for this first die to cool, I went ahead and did a second one under the hydraulic press. It took about 
15, 20 seconds, something like that. So I've got another one of these to go that I'll use a different tool to create those little dimples in and find something smaller. Might even have to make a tool for that, so I'm not going to do that right away. I want to go ahead and test this one out, see what it looks like. I might decide that I like this one. And for that, I'm going to start with a piece of half-inch round bar, and I'm going to treat it just like I did that master. Try to put a kind of a blunt taper on the end of it. And then offset it to start the stem. I just want it to want to be the impression. So I can kind of check that in there. I think that's not a bad start. It's not going to be exact, but it's close. And this is something you have to work with and find out what your starting point needs to be. A half inch bar may be too much here. Well, let's just see what this does. And just like before, be aware that it might want to jump. And put it back in there if it does. Well, it filled that up pretty well. It does have a little bit of flash, but not badly. So there's some potential there. I think I'll go, I think I'll let this cool a bit and then go grind the, the edge off to see what ends up after that flash is cooled off. The big thing I don't like about it though is these holes scrunched together when I was punching them. They all wanted to move into one. So I think smaller little nubs are definitely the way to go. So that really did clean up and looks a lot better, but the dimples are still in the wrong place. So I'm happy with the outer shape. So my other die that I made is going to work out fine, but I left it to anneal because I might try and do those cold. I don't know if that'll work or not if I get a deep enough impression, but we'll find out. And I'll keep this. There may be some use for it somewhere someday. In the meantime, I'm going to make another tool to do those dimples with that is much smaller. This is just another piece of that same S7. And that'll take a fair amount of grinding. The flat is just to make it more comfortable to use and help index it, which doesn't really matter so much for a round tool. Something I learned from Mark Asprey, and I kind of like this style tool, so I keep doing it.
I'm going to put this in the vermiculite to cool, let it slow cool as slowly as I possibly can anyways. And that way it won't be quite fully hardened in the morning. I'll come back, I'll do the grinding, harden it, temper it, and then we'll get back to work on this project. But we've seen the hardening and tempering part on making punches and chisels in lots of videos. I'll link to something up here that explains it in more detail. But hopefully we'll get this die finished and get to make the little leaf element I was trying to make. I got this tool all hardened and tempered and got a nice little round end on it that is smaller than this other one. Even though it's a much bigger tool, it's a much smaller end. Let's just try a little sample piece this time, something I should have done the last time. And I'm going to run a line of these. And I'm using the same hammer I used last time. Lots of possibility for stamping like this. That's almost as big. So let me switch hammers and see if a lighter hammer and also a lower heat. Much better. So I think the lighter hammer and not getting the block too hot will be quite critical in getting the effect I want. Hopefully you can see that. So the next thing to do is go ahead and put this in the fire and get it hot. I have ground it down to make sure it's smooth and there weren't any high edges after sinking it and then also cleaned up the sharp edges along here so that it isn't so sharp. You don't really want sharp edges on tools like this. I also really relieved this section here so it doesn't leave a shoulder. So we're going to get it hot, but try not to get it bright orange. Leave it down in the dull orange or a bright red. I will try to be much more careful with this one than I was yesterday when we got things way too deep. So far, so good. I'm not seeing much of any distortion. Sometimes things just don't go right the first time, so you got to come back and deal with it. Not a big deal, usually. Well, I would like another row there. I wonder if mine's a little narrower than his, or if my tool is just enough bigger that... I don't really like coming in here at an angle like this, but it's the only way I can get it to bite. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Problem is you kind of create a situation where it's not going to want to come out cleanly. But I think I'm through messing with that. We're going to let this cool and I'm going to do one 
at a mild steel and see what happens. And then this will need to be hardened and tempered. Now once again, we're going to start with a kind of dull point here. Just start defining the shape we want, even though we aren't going to get it right down to it. Leave a little less material than I left the last time, because I had a little too much. Start rounding the stem up. I think we decided, my wife and I, that this is a little bit more flower shape perhaps than leaf shape. Hard to say, but. Yep. It's the advantage of actually having it anchor somewhere. But I'm liking the looks of this much better than I did the other one. And after a little while, you'll know just what the starting shape needs to be, and you won't have any cleanup after the fact. This one definitely has some flash or spreading out over the mold, stuff that's not part of the impression. Same thing's happening down in here. But I'll clean that up, and I think we're going to have a usable element there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. We've seen all the critical parts of it. I still need to harden and temper the block and then reset the master. And I think what I've decided to do is leave the first master the way it is as a step one for making the die. Then I'm going to make a second one using the die that has the dimples in it. So then I'll have the the initial impression on this one, and the other one will make the final impression. I think that'll be a better system in the long run, going to two tools instead of trying to do it with just one tool. So to do that, to harden and temper this, harden and temper this, and I'll weld this onto an extension handle so I can hold it if I ever have to make new tools. Probably have another hour or two hours in it of actual work, and probably about four hours waiting for things to cool and temper and do all that kind of stuff. Pretty much this has been an off and on for two day project because there's been a lot of set it aside, let it cool, go do something else for a while kind of stuff. Although if you were in a big hurry, you could probably rush and it'd probably come out okay. But I want to go ahead and make sure it's properly hardened and tempered, get a master so I can use it again for something else. And then we're going to see these elements again in the not too distant future. I have a project in mind that I'm going to need a few of these for. But this isn't all that different from what they have on this project. There's a little rounder down here. This one's just a little bit, this has just a little bit more of a shoulder on it here. But the idea is very much the same and I'm really pretty happy with the way this one came out. I don't think you should ever expect it to be 100% perfect because if you wanted to do that, you'd have somebody do it on a milling machine. But we were able to look at making two of these die blocks. First one I didn't like so well, so we made a second one. We looked at making a tool to make the corrections that I didn't like from the first one, so the second one came out better. And we've looked at making the actual element out of, and I think it's all on the right track, so I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. Now, if you make a block like this, leaving it loose on the anvil is certainly one option. That way I can still put this under the fly press. I could probably use it under the treadle hammer, and certainly under the hydraulic press. Just a little block without a handle is about as convenient as it gets. For the power hammer, I would want an extension handle so I could hold this out here like this and use it under the power hammer. I suppose if I was using it at the anvil exclusively, I would make one with a hardy shank. And if I did that, I might make it a little bit bigger and have two impressions side by side for similar but not quite exactly the same elements with one hardy shank. So I only have to forge half as many hardy shanks to get twice as many tools or something like that. So how you finish this off and secure it is entirely up to where you're going to use it. At the anvil is different than under a power hammer, is different under the treadle hammer, and different under the hydraulic press. So just adapt for the tooling you have in your shop. 
But I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.